Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And we're, we got a really interesting topic for you. Show me the money. Show me the money. Don't give me a lot of BS. Just show me the money. When people go on to cable news or other programs and they talk about Bitcoin, show me the money. Show me what they're doing with their money that backs up what they just said publicly. Because there's been too many people that go on to the news networks and they say something positive about Bitcoin, but behind the scenes they're selling it or they're saying something negative about Bitcoin and behind the scenes they're buying it. In other words, they're doing just the opposite of what they say publicly. Show me the money. Prove to me what you're saying is what you really believe. Because a lot of people have no problem getting on camera and absolutely lying to everybody. So today, we're going to look at the money from two different sources. We're going to look at money from whales, people who have $10 million or more invested in Bitcoin. And we're going to look at money from smaller investors, people who have 0.1 Bitcoin, approximately $1,000 in Bitcoin or more. And we're going to look at what are they doing with their money, with their Bitcoin, with their BTC. Now, a lot of you love to talk about altcoins and other cryptocurrencies. So what we're talking about today applies really to the entire cryptocurrency market. Because when Bitcoin is going up, everything else goes up. When Bitcoin is going down, everything else is going down. So this may be focused mostly on Bitcoin, but it really has to do with the entire cryptocurrency industry. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. Hey, it really helps us out. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Check this out. I'm not a financial advisor. My background is in computers. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So I'm going to give you what I believe. In fact, I'm going to tell you the very same thing I, I tell my mom or I tell my brothers or I tell my friends. So it's my opinion. It's not financial advice. Uh, take it with a grain of salt and do your own research. In fact, I'm going to give you the links in the YouTube description so that you can go and read the articles where the information that I used in this video comes from so that you can get more informed and make a good decision for yourself. Because you need to remember, hey, cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss. Now, while this paragraph was written specifically for cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, hey, this applies to any kind of uh, investment that you're going to make. So whether you're investing in cryptocurrency or real estate or stocks or something else entirely, some sort of a business, uh, you want to understand the risks that you're taking and make sure that you take care of your family and yourself first. Numero uno comes first. And then once you're doing well, then you can expand and help others or do other things. So we're going to look here at Bitcoin whales. Now these are people, well, these are actually not people. These are addresses. So the address might represent a person or that Bitcoin address might represent a business or some other entity. Maybe it's an endowment fund. Maybe it's a charity. Maybe it's something else. The bottom line is that these Bitcoin addresses have greater than one thing thousand Bitcoin in the address. And then this gray line is actually the price of Bitcoin. And so we can see that the number of addresses with a thousand or more Bitcoin in them went skyrocketing back in May of 2016. And May of 2016, it hit an all-time high. And then since then, it's been 
declining. Basically, those that had all of these Bitcoin addresses with a thousand or more Bitcoin started selling off. In fact, you can see the greatest sell-off was occurring as Bitcoin peaked at 20,000 and then came down and it leveled out around September of 2018, kind of leveled out for a while. And you can see that before the big dump in November of 2018, the number of whales dropped significantly. So that almost looks to me like they knew something was going to happen here and they decided to get out of their positions. And then some of them you can kind of see as it's going back up again, as it dropped in here, some of them began to buy in and you can see even more people selling off and then it kind of bottoms out right about here when the price hits uh, around $4,000 back in January and May of 2019 is when they started buying again. So you can see by this chart and the number of addresses that hold a thousand Bitcoin or more, it's almost as if they had knowledge of what was about to happen in the cryptocurrency market. And as the cryptocurrency market hit a new all-time, well, not an all-time high, but a high of $14,000, you can see a whole bunch of them selling off. And then they quickly bought back in or somebody else bought in because we don't know if Fred sold here and then Fred bought back in here or if Fred sold here and Susan bought back in here. So we, we don't know the actual individuals. We just know the number of addresses. Um, but as you can see, since the beginning of January 2020, this number of addresses has been steadily climbing. So there's been more and more and more addresses with, a th with $10 million or more of Bitcoin in those addresses. And it's just been on the increase. In fact, it wasn't until a few days ago, weeks ago. Um, well, I'm sorry, not days or, uh, days or weeks ago, but we're talking near the end of May that we saw a slight dip. I'd sure love to see the numbers for June and the beginning of July. I'm wondering if this has continued to go up. Anyway, here's my interpretation. Here's my thoughts on this graph, on this chart. It looks to me like because of this growth that the people who have $10 million or more to invest in Bitcoin are expecting something big to happen. They're thinking that these are the lows for future highs and they're expecting future highs to pay them nice dividends. And so that's kind of how I read this chart. So I know Bitcoin has been kind of going sideways for quite a while. I think the whole thing about it going sideways has been people are accumulating more and more in anticipation of a new bull run. So that's kind of how I read the chart. That's my opinion. Everybody else is entitled to their own opinion. And I know that some have read the same chart and said, oh my gosh, Bitcoin's going to crash. So I don't know why people with $10 million would be buying more of it if they thought it was going to crash. So how somebody can say, oh, the whales are buying more and it's going to crash. I don't know where they get that conclusion from, but I read a couple of articles where that's exactly what they were saying. So just thought that was interesting. Um, but it also goes to show that you need to understand the motivations of who's talking to you. Um, my motivation is I want to make money with Bitcoin. And so you understand where I'm coming from. I have a tendency to have a bullish uh, interpretation on everything. I look for the, the I, I, in my mind, Bitcoin is just in the early stages. I think we're seeing, uh, so anyway, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. Now, on this chart, we have entities that have greater than 1,000 Bitcoin and balances on exchanges. And so this starts January of this year and goes all the way to June of this year. And here's the interesting thing. The balances on a variety of, Bit of cryptocurrency exchanges in Bitcoin, the Bitcoin balances have been going down while the number of addresses with a thousand or more Bitcoin is going up. And so these people that hold $10 million or more in cryptocurrency, it looks like they're taking their money out of exchanges. 
Now, most of the time, and of course this isn't gospel, and, and it, this is cryptocurrency. It takes just a few minutes to move money from an address or a hardware wallet onto a cryptocurrency exchange. But in my mind, the, the most obvious explanation as to why the balance on the exchanges is going down and the investment or the number of addresses with a thousand Bitcoin or more is going up is because people are taking their money out of the exchanges and putting it into a more long-term storage. When you have money on exchanges, the reason why it's there is because you want to trade with it. You want to do something with it. When you take it off of the exchange and you put it into your own address, you're doing that because you're thinking, I'm going to hold on to this for a longer period of time. I don't need it on an exchange because I don't need immediate access to it. It's okay if it takes me longer so that I can sell it. And so that's one interpretation. Another possibility is is they're moving the money off of exchanges because they're going to use something other than an exchange to buy and sell their cryptocurrency. Uh, Maybe they're using an over-the-counter market or they're using something like Changely or some other method where they're they're buying and selling without depositing their crypto on an exchange. But it just seems odd that that's happened uh, like dramatically since the halving. So the, since the halving, the numbers have been dropping like a stone and uh, in terms of the balances on the exchanges and it's been increasing significantly uh, in terms of the number of addresses. And so we see a clear trend from this chart from Glassnode of the number of addresses increasing while the exchanges are decreasing. Now I told you that we were gonna look at retail investors as well, and what I wanted to show here is the number of Bitcoin addresses holding 0.1 Bitcoin. Now today, 0.1 Bitcoin is right under $1,000. As Bitcoin is at 9,150 bucks at the time of this Uh, recording. Uh, That means that 0.1 Bitcoin is actually about $950 in value. But here's the bottom line. The number of addresses that hold 0.1 Bitcoin or more has been going up dramatically. In other words, there's more and more and more retail investors. And in the article, Glassnode tried to dig into these numbers and the best conclusion that they could come from come up with is that this indicates that retail is actually increasing that the number of people who are small investors that have a few hundred dollars the number of those kind of people has been growing dramatically and we can see that this is from 2010 all the way to 2020 and that there's somewhere around 3 million bitcoin addresses that are holding about a thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. And so all of this is good news. What we see here is an increase in the retail investors and an increase in the whales and people storing that money, getting involved. Obviously, as a, as a whole, as a group think, you could say, uh, we're looking at, at information that indicates everybody's got a bullish expectation They think that Bitcoin is on its way up and that we're going to see higher prices. In fact, speaking of higher prices, when you look at the quarterly closing price on Bitcoin throughout its lifetime, the quarter that just ended just yesterday, uh, Bitcoin was at $9,140. And isn't that interesting that out of Bitcoin's history, That's the third highest price of any quarter. So back here in 2019, quarter two, it was at 10,500. And then back here at quarter four of 2017, it was at 13,660. And so throughout Bitcoin's history, this is the third highest price at the close of a quarter. I think that's significant. You know, I was thinking that Quarter two of 2020 was was really a bomb or a wash or didn't turn out very well. But when I look at this, I realize, oh my gosh, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought. And so the thing that I got out of this is 
because of the pandemic and because of all the craziness that's going on in the world, I had a more of a negative attitude about what happened in the last three months in regards to Bitcoin's price than I really should have. Because, you know, to be honest with you, Bitcoin is only at 9140 and my expectation was I expected to see it higher than that. I expected to see it at more than $10,000 and possibly a lot higher. And it hasn't. And so while I thought it was a little bit on the downside, the reality is it actually did really pretty good. Um, and then this is another chart I wanted to look at. And this is the supply for the last this is the number of addresses that have had Bitcoin in it for one year and longer. And you can see that the last time it hit an all-time high of the number of addresses that held Bitcoin for one year or longer was 60% back in 2016, just before Bitcoin hit its new all-time high of $20,000. And ever since then, it, it dropped down as it approached that $20,000 high with the number of addresses that have, that have, like, here's an address and Bitcoin hasn't gone out of it in the last year or more. They may have added to that address. They may have bought more Bitcoin, but they didn't sell any Bitcoin. And so, very interesting. I think this is very interesting because as you can see, as we've been getting closer and closer to the halving and even with this huge drop, the number of addresses that held Bitcoin for a year or more did very, very little. Here's a tiny bump um, during the March pandemic, and uh, just a tiny, tiny bump. But for the most part, there's been an increase in the number of addresses that have been holding on to Bitcoin for one year and longer. And so to me, that tells me that these people have been holding their Bitcoin for a year already and they're continuing to hold in spite of things like the big drop during the pandemic and everything else that's been going on because they have an expectation that they're going to make some money. I don't know of any other reason why somebody would hold on to their Bitcoin for a year or longer. So anyway, uh, and, and this high of 61% that happened back here, we have actually surpassed that yesterday and hit 62%. So this number has continued to go up and we're seeing a brand new all-time high in the number or the percentages of addresses in Bitcoin that have held it for one year and longer. So quite remarkable, quite amazing. Anyway, how can I be of service to you do you have questions, thoughts, comments? Do you disagree with me? Maybe I said something that you think was totally bogus. I would love to hear your polite disagreements in the comments below. Because look, you know things I don't know. I know things that you don't know. When we share what we know with each other, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you, even when you disagree with me. So I hope you'll put your comments. I hope you'll include your polite disagreements in the comment section below. In the meantime, do me a favor, like, subscribe, and hodl, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.